some of the best minds in the world bringing you some of the best knowledge on TRS clips. Because you're a neurologist, let's mm. talk specifically about the brain. Mm. Let's begin with say Neuralink. Yeah. I think there's one more company called Synchron, yeah. which has achieved a lot of progress in yeah. uh, this computer brain interface. Right. Why don't you explain what these things are to someone who's never heard these words, Neuralink and Synchron. Sure. And then why don't you explain the possibilities? All right. Uh, the best way to understand the purpose of Neuralink is to think about the speed of data transfer. Mm. Okay. So you and I are talking, uh, I can hear you. My brain is processing it. My brain is telling my mouth and my lips and my tongue to speak words and you can hear it. So we are communicating at a rate of say five words per second, two words per second, right? Now, if I have to tell some other friend what you have told me, I have to physically go and tell them. This is 5,000 years ago. Then you increase the rate of communication by creating a postal network. Now I can write a letter and send it across. Then you come up with telephones. Now it's even faster. Rate of communication is faster. Then you come up with emails. Then you come up with Wi-Fi. So the rate of communication between all of us is increasing better and better. Now I have to interact with a mobile. How quickly can I get a message to you depends on how quickly I can type. So that is the rate of communication. If I can type 50 words in a minute, that is the rate of communication. What if I can type as quickly as I can speak? That is the next step, voice detection. What if I can type as quickly as I can think? So that is where brain machine interfacing comes in. We are already living in a brain machine interface, except that right now the interface, what is interface? It is the barrier between two things. So right now the interface between me and my mobile is my thumb. How quickly my thumb moves is how quickly I can interact with the machine. But if there is a chip in my brain, which can read my thoughts theoretically, and I can directly think out words that can get typed so that the interface becomes my thinking. Mm. So how quickly can I think will decide how quickly I can type. Also how quickly I can move things. So right now, if I have to start a car, the interface is that I have to move my arm and turn the ignition. But what if there is a link directly from my brain to the car engine? That means that I don't need a key. I don't need that key ignition. None of that. It's a direct interface. So brain machine interfacing essentially means co connecting your brain to all the other equipment around you, which right now it is already connected, except it is connected through your arms and physical movement. Mm. So you are sidestepping that. Mm. Okay. Um, engineering question. Mm. Engineering student, medical student. Mm. Okay. Brain machine <laughs> interface. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, the question to you Every is that- Every parent's dream. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. If only, <laughs> if only you weren't a two, guy. <laughs> two content creators <laughs> talking about how we made our parents proud. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> now, uh, when you study computers at a very basic level, mm -hmm. Terms of the softwares we use are created using code, mm -hmm. coded. Mm -hmm. What are the codes created with? What is the building block of code? Mm. Or what is the building block of a computer? Mm. The building block of a computer is something called a microchip or a microprocessor. We had a subject called mu p mu c, microchips and microprocessors. Right. All right. The basic logic of that is that everything inside a computer is built up of zeros and ones. Yeah, the binary. Yeah, the binary. Mm. So if you type an A, the computer doesn't read it as an A. Right. The language that the computer speaks is only zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. So it'll code the A as a combination of zeros and ones. And that's the basic logic of binary. A B is another combination. A C is another combination. Right. Numerals, symbols, they all have their own combinations. Right. And then you put letters together, you get words. Yeah. You put words together, you get sentences. Sentences are, uh, basically the building blocks of a, a code. Right. Okay. But when you boil down to its basic, it's zeros and ones. Yeah. If you boil that down even further, it means there's a lot of circuits inside a computer. Yeah. And every time it reads a one, it fires an electrical volt. Right. And every time it reads zero, it doesn't. Right. Or the other way. Mm. But my point is, I'm asking you about the biological version of this. Mm. Does your brain work in the same way? Like, does it understand binary only? Is that the logic behind them creating brain machine interfaces? No. So brain machine interfaces is to 
uh, directly map which areas of the brain are firing. Okay. So we are not going into the molecular level yet. We don't have the technology to do that. At the molecular level, it is very similar, except that it's more like a qubit, not a bit, hmm. where it's not a binary. So there is a open state, a closed state, and a semi-open state for receptors. It's too met. Wow. It's too deep. So but instead of a binary, there's a trinary or whatever. Sort of something like that. So when a sign, when two neurons are talking to each other, there are receptors that can let sodium ions in. calcium ions in and that is what determines whether that neuron will fire or not now you can either have a closed state so that means a neuron will not fire an open state where it is going to fire or a semi open state where it may fire depending on all the other variables wow so it's a much more complex system than a just ones and zeros my question is synchron this company mm -hmm. that we read about mm -hmm. they were able to get a paralyzed man to write a sentence using just his thoughts yeah how did that happen like i understand how it happened on the computer side but what happened on the biology side so when um, i'll take the example of the monkey it's easier to understand uh, when neuralink was able to train a monkey to play a video game with just his thoughts mm. So initially, what he did was, uh, what the company did was, they gave a monkey a remote, okay, and with the remote, he has to move a block around a screen, and it has to he has to bounce a ball around the screen. So every time the ball would hit the the block, the monkey would be able to get a spurt of strawberry or like a sweet liquid. So that's a a uh, reward mechanism right so now the monkey knows that okay i have to keep on doing this in order to keep getting that dopamine kick mm. but without that monkey being aware uh, the computer was detecting every time he would move his hand to the right which area would fire move to the left which area would fire up which area would fire down which area would fire and the company was just reading all of that and correlating with the actual hand movement once it has figured that out it disconnected the uh, remote from the screen and directly connected the brain to the screen the monkey didn't know that the monkey is still moving the remote but now every time that particular area will fire the screen will automatically move and the monkey still thinks that i am moving it with my remote so every time you want to execute a particular action like for example if i want to move my index finger a separate area of my brain is firing if i want to move my little finger a separate area is firing so if i can map that onto a code i don't need my hand right so if i'm pressing the remote the only reason i have to press the remote is because there is no way for my brain to directly press the remote but if i can connect my brain to this it is direct same for words same for language if i have to, although language is more co complex than just moving a particular finger but it is still possible that if you have to come up with certain words uh you can map your brain accordingly what is more easy is suppose if i have 10 words in front of me i can move my eyes to a particular point and that can pick up the word that is what stephen hawking did uh he experimented with multiple things um so you are able to pick up words with your eyes that is another way of brain machine interfacing what about dreams i actually read about this research that's being done to showcase dreams visually hmm so if you're dreaming uh they are trying to work on technologies which will actually be able to showcase sort of what the dream looks as like as far as i know it's not been successful yet okay. um because there is there is actually no not a big screen that is playing in your brain and you can just uh, output it onto a real world screen mm. uh, it's just neural networks firing together coming up with an image and then it disintegrating um but you can map which areas are getting fired and if you are successful enough and if you go down deep enough you can map which areas represent which memories mm. as far as i know so far they have not been successful in doing that but i have no doubt that it will happen so from all this what i gather is that 
on the biology side mm-hmm. when they're trying to uh, get the brain part of the computer brain interface or the machine brain interface it's basically a device a machine that maps out your entire brain with yeah. all its details yeah and then takes out parts to construct something on the computer side yes okay it tries to decode what this part firing means mm. now the complicated part is that the same part can fire for multiple reasons like for example if i'm walking and certain parts of my brain are firing the same parts could also fire if i'm listening to same a michael jackson song so now if that part fires what will the computer interpret it as mm. so it has to understand the complexity it has to understand the context of a particular pattern of network firing which is why the challenge is there okay deeper question mm-hmm. if i move my left hand mm-hmm. and if you move and if you move your left hand mm-hmm. uh is this same part of both our brains firing or is it different for me and different for you it's it'll be very very similar so if you're if you're moving your left arm the right motor cortex is moving same for me okay so that much uh, homogeneity is there like both of our brains will be wired that similarly which is why movement is probably the easiest one to monitor initially mm. language is more difficult memories emotions are even more difficult so i think what elon musk said on a joe rogan experience podcast was that the main purpose of neuralink initially is to fix all the neurological problems that we find in the brain you're a neurologist it's yeah. your job to do this mm. now how do you one feel about a technology like that coming in and maybe i won't say taking away your job but sort of affecting your profession hmm and second is that actually possible speaking as a neurologist yeah absolutely and it's not taking away my profession there's already devices that do this there's something called as deep brain stimulation so if a part of your brain isn't working as well for example in parkinsons you've heard of parkinsons hmm. uh, a part of the brain where dopamine is supposed to be acting that part disintegrates or doesn't work as well so we put in a stimulator like a battery operated stimulator and that will give electric impulses to that area to stimulate it like surgically you'll put it surgically you put it into wow. the brain so that is called deep brain stimulation so it is like a uh, battery charging a car you know you you kick start a car if it's not working so that's how deep brain stimulation works uh it's already happening and it is part of the treatment options that we offer to parkinson patients jinme dawai ka farak nahi pad raha hai or if who who have become tolerant to medicines who have whose disease has advanced so much there are other surgical solutions like for example agar kisi ko seizure ho raha hai you have an you have an epilepsy disorder epilepsy is when there is uncontrolled electrical activity so you can put in an implant that can cancel out a seizure so if there's electrical activity coming from here you cancel it out so that the seizure stops spreading that is also one of the ways in which you can treat an epilepsy patient thanks for watching make sure you check out the entire episode and also check out this playlist that we've curated just for you